thank you, Lord God. Lord God, for bringing us all here safely together, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, God, for our man and our woman of God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for our church family, God. We still pray for those who mourn, God, those who weep. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that you will renew the strength in the bodies, their mind, soul, and spirit, Lord God. God, let this word, Lord God, today minister, God, to the needs of your people, Lord. God, let the songs of praises, God, minister, Lord God, to the needs of your people as well. God, we're asking you, Lord God, for a spirit of liberty, a spirit of unity, and a spirit of love. God, we're asking you, Lord God, that we unite together, God, and pull on this word, Lord God, coming from our man of God. God, we love you, Lord God, and we appreciate you, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord God. We praise you, God. God, for the opportunity, Lord God, to stand before your people. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all can just join with me. Let us all just sing together. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If anyone should ever write my life story, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, there might be. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Jesus.
today's grace, Lord, for having life, health, and strength, Lord, to wake up on today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us a mind to gather in the house of prayer, in a time of prayer, and all the praises that have gone up before you. Thank you for bringing us safely over these highways and surface streets. Lord, we don't ever want to take it for granted. Lord, we saw a truck in the ditch this morning, Lord, you know, don't know where we would be if your angels had watched over us and kept us and brought us safely. We appreciate you, Lord, in all things. We give you glory, honor, and praise on today. Lord, we ask you this morning to continue to strengthen Sister Rivers, Lord, and heal her from all this injury in her to her body. Strengthen her bones, Lord. You say you will make fat our bones, Lord, all throughout this shoulder and her face and head, everyone was injured, make her whole. Mom and Pop Smith still need your strength and your healing. Lord, and her mother as well. Lord, deliver them from all these complications. The devil is an old age lie. Lord, you're a healer. You renew our youth. Lord, renew their youth, Father, in the name of Jesus. Sister Tawanda and Sister Triplett, turn these things around. It's these long-term things that seem to be Lord, unyield and Lord, break these yokes. Lord, we stand in prayer with them against these demons of illness and sickness. Let your spirit help our infirmities on today. You said it would do it in Romans 8. We believe you, Lord, to heal Brother Morris and Sister Thani, all the sisters battling heart disease, and all these folks battling, Lord, high blood pressure and diabetes. Lord, whatever the ailment is, you're the healer of it. Make whole by your stripes. 
And Lord, we pray, Lord, for every sinner and backslider, for the cold and for the lukewarm. Lord, that you will let your stir and your grace, and your mercy, and your Holy Ghost quicken us, Lord, on the day. Move, Lord, for all your people, saved and unsaved, that need you. Lord, we need you to reach through this darkness, reach through this coldness, and break these yokes, Lord, these hard spirits, Lord, that's trying to bind up your people. But I read in your word, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And we receive it at your hand. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord as you see it. Amen. We thank God for being in the house of prayer on today. Thank the Lord for healing Sister Brown. Amen. Amen. He's still a healer, ain't he? Amen. We thank God for the healing stripes of Jesus Christ. And I guess you figured out Brother Rivers is not here today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sister Rivers had a, a bad fall on Friday. And uh, of course, he wanted to go home and be with his wife. And I would too. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So we thank God that she didn't have to stay hospitalized. She had a fractured uh, shoulder and uh, had a cut under her eye. She's in a lot of pain, but the Lord is our keeper. He said he would have to give his angels charge over us if we dash our foot against the stone. Y'all believe that? So I said, that was Jesus. Well, who do you think you are? You are the body of Christ. Amen. And so the Lord is watching over us. We got angels watching over us. Y'all believe that? We got angels watching over us. Even when you can't see it, they're still there. They're ministering spirits sent forth to minister. For them that shall be the heirs of salvation. It's like Sister Brown was saying, something turned that little baby around. I know that was the angel of the Lord. The Bible said he encamps round about them that fear him. Amen. If it wasn't for the Lord's angels, the devil would have consumed us a long time ago. Amen. But God is watching out for his people. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate the Lord for giving us ministering spirits. Amen. Always watching. As I tell you, the devil would love to destroy all of us, but the Lord, amen, is our help. I mean, believe that. Amen. Thank God for you being in the house of prayer on today. Pray good to see Brother Randolph. I've been missing him. I asked Sister Randolph, where he been? She started making his defense. Man, she's better than any defense lawyer ever was. She was, she was going to bat for any. Say he's been working night nice shift. I say, all right, now listen to the defense. I say, all right, now tell him I still want to see him. <laughs> it's hard when you work a night nice shift. Yes, it is. Amen. Well, we're glad he made time for Jesus. You got to make time yes. for the Lord, don't you? Amen. Praise the Lord. So if you fall asleep, y'all, just pass over him on today. But he's trying. I tell you, you got you to gotta go the extra mile for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good to have all the saints from the country. My yes. Cousin Malachi back there. A little niece, Jocelyn. Amen. Got two Jocelyns in the house today. All right now. Praise and good to have my wife back from Florida. She hadn't been here literally in a month of Sundays. She hadn't been here in a long while. Amen. And she's back. Amen. Thank God. I did miss my wife. Thank God she's back. Amen. Some folks say, thank God she's gone. Praise Lord. I felt like that for about three days, man. I could drink all the soda I want. <laughs> Wear my dirty shoes in the kitchen. Oh, my Lord. It was just wonderful. After about three days, that wore off. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Every, every, every couple needs a little time apart. I tell her I'm on fast, man. She almost had my bags packed before I could get the tea on the fast. I said, yeah, honey. Anytime you want to go to church, shut in. Go. She's all for it. She won't be out of the house, I think, sometime. There ain't nothing wrong with that for a short period. Amen. But too long, that's, 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 that's something wrong with that. Amen. So we thank God. And uh, as we said uh, on yesterday, we're going to have Brother uh, Freddie O'Dell preaching. Uh, some of you have been over to East St. Louis with us. We're going to have him preaching on uh, Saturday, December the 3rd. Amen. We're going to get him down to the country. And then on December the 4th. Hallelujah. Sister Patty will be preaching on Sunday morning. 
Amen. She gonna transfer that song leader anointing back to her preacher. Amen. She's been having some anointed songs. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I said, Sister Patty is still in. Yes, sir. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Yes, it is. And we go through some dark valleys. We're going through one right now, but the Lord is still with us. Even though we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. The devil has no victory here. He is a liar and the father of lies. Ain't no victory in him. God kicked him out of heaven so fast, Jesus said, look like lightning. Oh, hallelujah. Is that what the Bible says? Amen. Kicked him out so fast, it looked like lightning. He ain't had no victory ever since. That means that when your body feel like it's sick, it's still well. Amen. When you feel like you're backslidden, you're still saved. Amen. There's going to be some time you don't feel safe. Can I get an amen on that? People think I'm supposed to feel safe. You ain't going to be speaking in tongues all the time. You ain't going to be skipping. Now, some days you're going to be crying instead of laughing. But you're still saved. And the Lord is still with us. Amen. Here's one thing. If the devil can make you doubt that the Lord is with you, he'll take you back into sin. The devil tell you, God done forsaken you, you go ahead and forsake him. But Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Told us in Matthew 24, he that endures till the end, the same shall be saved. We talk about blessing. You want to know what the best blessing you can have? Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. If you can keep enduring through whatever you have to go through, there's a reward at the end of your endurance. Amen. You don't endure pleasant things. You endure hardships. Paul told Timothy, endure hardness as a good soldier. You have to have some endurance in you. Amen. You can't be no wimp. You can't be no sissy Christian. You got to have some fighting. You say, this is my infirmity, and I'm going to burn. Yeah, I'm going through it right now, but I'm going to come out of it at the end. The Lord's going to bring me out. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. You're going to come out of it. Tell somebody you're coming out of it. I believe we're, we're going to come out of this thing. We're coming out of this thing. We're coming out of this dark tunnel. Amen. The Lord is going to bring us through. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will say, you look for a revival. I'm fighting hard, man. Folks is getting divorced. and Marriages is on the brink. My Lord. Praise the Lord. But I'm sticking with Jesus. I'm sticking with Jesus. Amen. And I, I know somebody's going to endure to the end. Amen. I made up my mind I'm going to be I'm one of those that endure until the end. Here's one thing you have to be sure of. No temptation is taking you, but such as is common to man. The devil can get you thinking that what you're going through is uncommon and unusual. He's got you halfway to heaven. You got to realize that everybody's going through something. Yes, Amen. Everybody. And your temptation don't mean that there's a flaw in you or in your character. Amen. It means there's a devil and an adversary. And all of us yes, are tempted. Was, even Jesus was tempted. Yes, he was. Yes. People think it was just some mystical thing, the devil out here. Uh uh, his flesh wanted that. Yes. Oh, y'all don't believe this Bible when you read it. His flesh wanted to turn those stones into bread. His flesh wanted to prove that he was the son of God by casting himself down their head off. It was something in his flesh that wanted to bow down to Satan when he saw all the something, but something else in him rose up and said, it is written. If he didn't want to do it, it was not a temptation. A temptation is something that your flesh wants to do. But he was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. Temptation ain't sin. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. And then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And then sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Amen. Amen. So being tempted ain't sinning. Amen. That's just flesh. Flesh is always going to be tempted with something. You're going to always see something your flesh wants. Amen. You have to resist that. A lot of people praying don't know what deliverance is. Think deliverance is you don't want that cigarette no more. Uh uh, deliverance ain't you don't want it. Deliverance is that cigarette don't have no power over you no more. You may still be tempted with it. 
See, we hear people say, well, God saved me, and I ain't never went back to that again. Well, that's good, but that don't mean you never were tempted again. That's right. It means you're not bound with it. Y'all, we need to know the difference in the Word of God. People think they ain't delivered because they're still tempted with stuff. That don't mean you're not delivered. When you are bound, you can't help yourself. No, you can't. But when you can resist that thing and stand up and say what the word of God says, you are delivered even though you still may be tempted. Is that plain? Oh, let the pastor preach for a little while today. Amen. I'm, I'm free from sin. I'm free. Anybody else free from sin? I'm free from depression. Amen. I'm free from worry. I'm free from anxiety. Amen. I'm casting all my care. Is that what Peter said? He said, cast your cup. He didn't say, place it. He said, take it in your hand and throw it until it's out of your control. And wherever it lands, that's where it lands. That's what it means to cast your cup on him. For he careth for you. Amen. You can't control things. You can't control other people. All you can do is ask God for enough grace to live right yourself. Because you ain't going to control nobody else. A lot of married people fighting because the wife want to control the husband. The husband want to control the wife. You can't control your spouse. No, sir. No, Amen. Sir. You cannot control a grown person. No. You have enough trouble controlling your kids. Yes. Bad as they are. Lord, yes. have mercy. Amen. You can't control a grown person. No, you can't. I don't care if they are married to you. Right. Leave people alone. Amen. To their own master, they stand or fall. Y'all read that in Romans? Yes. Yes. Amen. That includes your husband or your wife. I'm going to follow mine up and make sure they ain't cheating on me. Oh, you can't make God. sure of that. Where the I'm going to follow them around. I'm going to put a track on their phone. Oh, <laughs> you can't. If a person want to be unfaithful to you, they're going to be unfaithful to you. Yeah, hey, Amen. I know somebody else I was talking to. Wife don't want them to go nowhere. Scared they're going to do this and do uh -huh. that. You can't make a grown person not Amen. do this or not do that. Amen. Leave them alone. Yes. I tell you what, if you'll pray... God will reveal anything yes, that's going on that ain't supposed to be going on. He'll bring the hidden things of darkness yes. to light. Yes, I told that to a woman once. Yes, and she worried her husband going to make a fool. Her husband doing this. Her. I said, you can't make him stop. No. I said, we're going to pray. And I asked him to his face, are you doing this? He said, no. Lying between his teeth. <laughs> right there in my office. I said, we're going to pray. And God's going to reveal it if he is. And if God don't, you leave it alone. And we prayed, and three weeks later, girlfriends start coming out the woodwork. Man, you couldn't oh swing a cat God. without hitting an extra girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you, God knows how to expose stuff. Yes, he does. And girlfriends start coming out. You my baby daddy and this and that and calling folks on the phone. Oh. You sleeping with them. I'm sleeping with them. All kind of stuff just started coming out. Oh, my. I mean, been doing it for years, but we prayed, and God brought everything out. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, he will, too. Doing. You be faithful to God. Oh, amen. amen. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Pastor. I'm going to hit him over the head with this baseball bat. That ain't going to improve his character. No, I ain't. No. And, no, and they ain't. wives cheat. Both, both sides. Everybody. You can't stop people. No, sir. My wife went to Florida. I wasn't worried about it because I know she got the Holy That's Ghost. Right. And if the Holy Ghost don't keep her, ain't nothing I can do. Amen. Not from 1,200 miles away, ain't nothing I can do. Amen. She'd be talking to me on the phone while another man kissing her hand. <laughs> ain't that like it? <laughs> she ain't like that? All right. Thank you, Sister Aretha. Sister Aretha let me know about it. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I trust my wife. She's got the Holy Ghost. Amen. And if I don't trust her, ain't nothing I can do about it. Just pray and say, Lord, you reveal anything that's here. And he will. I believe God ain't going to let you come up with some kind of sexually transmitted disease. Well, that's too plain, ain't it? Because somebody out gallivanting around don't have the Bible call them incontinent. Y'all know what incontinent means? Y'all don't know what incontinent means. Incontinent means you're unable to control yourself below the waist. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> That's true. <laughs> and all that that implies. <laughs> That's incontinent. Paul said people would be incontinent. Amen. You got to be able to control yourself. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, what am I saying? You're telling the truth now. <laughs> Amen. Let's go to the Word. That, that, that's a safety place. <laughs> Amen. Be praying for Sister Patty on December 4th. Amen. I know the devil trying to tell her I thought he was going to sit down on her. But I'm telling her the Holy Ghost is going to quickly throw her. Yes, he is. 
I tell you what most ministers need, the same thing I needed for many years, decades, actually, and still need. Amen. Talk to you, Sister Hunt, way back there. You need to just slow down and just be yourself. Yes. And we got this image in our head of what real preaching is. And I want to get down, I want to hit it hard, and I want to preach it, and all the scriptures going to be flowing. No, sometimes you just got to talk and be yourself. That's right. Settle down and slow down. Praise the Lord. And what's in you will come out. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. That's I true. believe that we got some preachers that got something in them. Yes, sir. Amen. I've been taking it easy on Sister Brown because the devil's been saying she was sick, but she says she well, so it's on now. All right. I don't like the part of that phone now. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I tell you, flesh feels sorry for you. I look at Sister I say, Pope Sister Brown, she just barely makes it. But now she says she healed. She going to get on this microphone. <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you what, Mother Hamilton said she ain't going to be no wheelchair preacher. Yes, well, we don't call her the wheelchair preacher. She, she said, I ain't going to be no wheelchair preacher. She said, I'm going to get up and preach without her. And she got up and preached without a wheelchair. Yes, she did. got back up on her feet. Yes, you got to start saying you heal when it looked like you're still sick. That's right. She first had that accident. They say she ain't going to live through the night. She lived through the night. Yes. After she lived through the night, they say she's going to be a vegetable. She found out she, she couldn't talk, but she could write them little notes. <laughs> Oh, that's Mother Hamilton right there. If you can't, if you don't do nothing else, you gonna get a note. That's the first thing she should have started doing was writing them notes. Found out she wasn't the best, but then they said she'll never walk again. Man, everything they said, she proved them wrong. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Faith is an overcome. Yes, it is. Praise the Lord. So I agree with Sister Brown. She's healed. Yes, sir. By the stripes of Jesus. Anybody agree with that? Yes. Amen. I agree with that. Praise the Lord. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and what else? The word, the word of their testimony. Amen. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Amen. Appreciate my idea of this to the auction. Man, those were some good Tuesday nights. A few I got into. I don't know what you had the book for. The book was just decoration. <laughs> I said, she ain't preaching what's in this book. She but she's got the word in her. Yeah. Amen. That's part of where I got the word from. <laughs> Sitting at her feet listening to them Bible studies. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Let's go to Matthew, the fifth chapter, and talk to you briefly today. Matthew 5 and verse 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Let's go over here to the book of Acts. We're going to read this. We're going to go somewhere else. We're going to come back to Acts in a little bit. But to the book of Acts, the 14th chapter. Acts 14. And let's read... Uh, Let's start at verse 15. And saying, Sirs, why do you these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn to God from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful season, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Let's go over to the book of Ephesians, and then we'll come back to Acts. The book of Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians 2, and let's start reading here. At verse 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in 
Amen. Father, thank you for these scriptures on today. We do ask you for the utterance to speak your word, that you would gather in our minds and our hearts by your grace to receive at your table. We bow our heads over this word of God as we do over a plate of food, and we give you thanks, and we ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. From this verse 8, the gift of God, the gift of God. Acts 17. How many know God is good to us? Yes, he is. How many know God is good to us even before we got saved? Amen, he was. Acts 17. And let's start reading here at verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord, if happily that is by chance they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. I want to talk to you about the gift of God, singular, not with an S, but the gift of God. The thing that God gives, that God continually gives. And even though it is singular, what we're talking to you about on today, the gift of God is broken up into two categories. The natural and the spiritual. The natural extension of the gift of God is to every human being. And that's why we read to you in Acts, the Bible says that he left not himself without witness. Even though the Bible says that in that chapter there that he allowed man to walk in their own way. And he allowed man to do what they wanted to do. And God gives you choice. God gives you free will. And the Bible says he suffered them to walk in their own way. And even though they were walking contrary, how many know Jesus loved you when you didn't love him? And even though mankind was walking contrary to God, the Bible says he left not himself without a witness. A witness to who? A witness to the people that were walking contrary to him in that he did good and gave them rain and fruitful seasons and he gave them food to eat. So Jesus tells us in Matthew 5 that God is so good that he makes his rain to fall on the evil and the good. He sends his sunshine not just on the just, but on the just and the unjust. Did we read that in the Bible? Yeah. That means that God was good to us when we were yet in our sin. That God reached out by his gift and God blessed us. God doesn't kill us just because we are sinners. Amen. God blesses us even when we have our backs turned on him. And that's why I love him so. Yes, sir. The Bible said that with loving kindness have I done what? Have I drawn thee? Hosea said, I drew you with the cords of a man, and you got to recognize that it is somebody else, somewhere else, keep filling your lungs with oxygen right now while you're breathing, that it's not just your body, that somewhere God is allowing your heart to keep on going thump, thump in your chest, that at any minute now, he could take away your breath, he could take away your heartbeat, but God is good to us. And not only does he give us life, he gives us where we can sustain our lives so that you can plant a garden and you can raise food, you have food to eat. You don't, go, you don't get food from the grocery store. Food grows out of the ground. Yes, yes, it does. Food is a result of God sending rain and sunshine that we read to you in Mark 5. If God would cut off the rain and have the clouds cover, you wouldn't have any food to eat. Why well, we still have cows and beef? If they don't have grain to eat, you don't have cows. That's right. 
God is the one that supplies. The Bible says he opens his hands and satisfies the desire of every living thing. That's God's witness to us. Even when we're not saved, that God is always mindful of us. He always feeds us. He always makes sure we have what we need for our lives even before we get saved. God is good to you. Well, I work for what I got. If God didn't give you the strength to work, you couldn't do it. If God didn't bless you with a job or bless you with a home, you wouldn't have those things. So God wants us to be able to recognize that it's him. Don't go around like these people in Acts 17 to the unknown God. Paul said, he that you ignorantly worship, he said, I'm going to declare him unto you because he gave it to all things. He don't need your sacrifice. He don't need nothing from you. Everything you got, Paul said, he's the one that gave it to you. Even your life and your prayer. We didn't read it. But he went on to say, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. We survive because God is good to us. Not because we're good to God, but because God is good to us. And that he's mindful of us. And that he loves us. Even when we don't love ourselves, God still loves us. Even when we don't love him, he still loves us. And he is good to us. And he takes care of us. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Even when you were doing well, whatever you were big enough to do, God was still taking care of you. Yes, he was. Amen. And so Paul said, why did he do all this in Acts 7? He said, if by chance, if happily, that somewhere the sinner could look at his life and say, God, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be alive today. Holly, think about the times before you got saved when the devil tried to stuff your life out again and God helped you and protected you and watched over you. There's a lot of people I know wasn't saved, rolled over in cars and had guns pulled on them and almost overdosed, but God had mercy on them when they were a sinner. God watched over you. He said, if happily, they might look at their life and say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Maybe they'll be able to look up and say, God, I recognize that you've been good to me all my life, and I'm going to seek you. You have to recognize that it's something greater than you watching over you. Thank you, Lord. If the Lord hadn't been on your side. The devil would have consumed you a long time ago. But God said not so. God made it possible for you to still be living and still be breathing and still be taken care of even when you were a sinner. He extended to you the natural part of the gift of God. Just because he's good. Just because he's good. And all you have to do with a gift is receive it. Oh, we're going somewhere here in a few minutes. Yes, and you teach your little kids that when somebody gives you something, a gift requires a proper response. Yes, a gift requires, when you get the little babies, Zay Zay and their age and, and little Benny, you're supposed to give them a little piece and you're supposed to say, say thank you. Don't let it go. Man, you want to make Sister Grady man. Let her give kids something and they just take it and walk off. We got some ungrateful kids. <laughs> I ain't gonna call no names. We got some kids there, take your stuff and walk off and roll their eyes because you didn't put the Ritos in their bag. Lord have mercy. You want to get Sister Grady, you want to get on her wrong side. I've seen her snatch stuff back from kids. <laughs> and you better say thank you. Y'all know these bad kids don't want to say thank you. You got to train them to how to say thank you. You got to train them how to be grateful. Well, Paul said, let me tell y'all something, Thessalonians. He said, in everything, give thanks. He said, because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Even if you ain't saved, when you wake up in the morning, you're supposed to say, thank you, God, I'm still alive. Thank you I didn't wake up in hell. Thank you I'm still breathing. Thank you that I had a bed to sleep in last night and a roof on my head. Thank you I got food in the refrigerator in everything. Because it is a gift. When you receive a gift, you have to say, thank you. Something wrong with you. You think you're entitled. You ain't entitled. 
We get our five dollars in America. We ain't entitled to all this free stuff the government been giving out. People think the government is supposed to take care of them. They ain't supposed to take care of you. You supposed to get your rusty red out there and work a job and take care of yourself. People are still begging for workers. They are. Seriously, boy, I can't find no job. That's a lie. You can find a job. It may not be a job paying eighty thousand a year, but you can find a job. Bro, Brown got two. You still working two jobs? Bless him, Lord. <laughs> Taking up the slack for some of the other ones. Folks don't want to work. They want to sit home. Man, they got in that pandemic. They start sending out checks left and right, hand over fist, six hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars. Why go to work? Nine hundred dollars. Nine hundred. I'm sorry, praise the Lord. Man, sending out all kind of money, ruin some people. And now you see help wanted signs all over. People begging for work. That's, right. That's the truth. Begging for work. Folks don't want to work because they think the government owes. Don't nobody owe you nothing. Nothing. Huh? When you get something, hey man, you're supposed to say thank you, Jesus. Yes, Even when you got a job. So I say, I got an education. Uh uh. When somebody hires you, you get a job, you're supposed to thank God for that job. Yes, God the one that blessed you. Yes, he did. God the one that made a way for you. Man, if God don't give you strength to get up, some of y'all been sick to the point you couldn't get out of bed sometimes. Yes, Lord. Huh? It's God that put you. It's yes. God that blessed you. It's God that gave you increase. It's God that said, I'm watching out for you. And I'm going to put, and you got to have enough in your mind to always say thank you. He said, when you get your food, he said, no creature of God is to be refused if it's received with two things. Thanksgiving and prayer. You got to say thank you, God, for this food. Oh, I know we overlook it sometimes, but you got to be grateful. You got to have something that acknowledges this food came from somewhere. It, it, it doesn't come from Walmart. It didn't come from the former. Amen. If God don't cause that seed to go, Jesus said, "Man, He said the kingdom of God is like a man that plants a seed and he goes his way and it springs forth. He knoweth not how." Is that in your mind? First the blade, then the end. The, amen. Scientists can get this. They, they can study it, but they can't tell you why. Amen. Stuff grow like it grows. No, sir. Just put a seed in the ground. It's been sitting on the shelf for 20 years. Put it in the ground. Give it some water and some sunshine, and then it'll start growing. Yes. I watched a heart transplant hmm. on YouTube somewhere I watched it years ago. Do you know every muscle in your body has a nerve that makes it move? Yes. Except your heart. The heart has no nerves connected to it. They took this heart out. They put another heart in. They diverted the blood through a machine. Why they put this heart in and put that heart in and sewed up all those arteries and whatever to that heart. And without sewing a single nerve, when they turned that machine off and started that blood going back to that body, that heart started beating all by itself. And you don't know why it's beating because it ain't got no nerves going to it. Hey, man, it ain't nothing but God causing that heart to thump, 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 thump. I was amazed. Hey, they, didn't, they didn't attach a single nerve. Every other muscle in your body has to have a nerve except your heart. We don't know how this. This is the gift of God. Thank God you're still alive. Let's go over here to Romans 1. Thank God that you had a Thank God for, even though they tried to rob me of it this morning, my Egg McMuffin. My wife said, my, my wife said, there's only one Egg McMuffin in this bag, and I can't have one to IT. Like, Where's my Egg McMuffin? So as I drove, when I finally did get it, I thank the Lord for it. Amen. 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 And the water I drank with it, God is good to us. Yes, I'm telling y'all something. I, 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 I'm, I'm looking at some of y'all. Y'all take stuff for granted. And I take it for granted, too. But we're going to have to learn that every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of life. That we don't deserve nothing but God in his gift and his mercy blesses us. Amen. I don't care if don't nobody else in the world acknowledge it. We need to acknowledge that God has been good to us. Because when you become unthankful, you fail to recognize the one who is giving you and he fades into the background. He wants to be in the forefront. Yes, he does. What happened to them in Romans 1? What happened to this generation? This is a Romans 1 generation if you ever saw one. Yes. What happened to these people? Paul said men with men working that which is unseen. And even their women didn't leave the natural use of the one. And what happened to these people? What happened to them? Romans 1. 
For the invisible thing, in verse 20, let me start at verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. How did God show you his nature and his love and his current? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen and understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Look at this next clause. Uh -huh. Neither were, what's that word? Thankful. They wouldn't glorify God, and they wouldn't thank God. They wouldn't acknowledge that every good thing I got comes from God. When you start thinking that you are self-sufficient, that you can handle life on your own because you're so smart or you're so strong or you're so handsome, you're headed for a fall. Every good thing you got comes from God. Yes, it does. And he wants you to be thankful. Because if you're thankful, Romans uh, Acts 17 said, God gave us all these things so that happily, by chance, we might see after God. It ain't like that no more, but it used to be. I'm going to look down. It used to be that a man had to win a woman. Mm. Now the women are chasing the men. Slow down. Can't you tell I like you? But it used to be that the men would pursue the women. And it used to be, I'm still looking down. That the men would buy flowers. Uh -huh. yes. And they would buy candy. Yeah. Oh, let me look up right now. I don't know why my husband don't appreciate me. It's because you just threw it out there and said, take it. Anybody want it? Come get it. <laughs> oh, my God. I better start looking back down again. <laughs> so he just pick you up. He, a man should have to woo a woman. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. He should have to say nice things. Yes. Preach it, preach it. Oh, yes. Holly. You say amen, Brother Roland? Keep saying that. Any woman chasing you, run the other way. Amen. Amen. Because if she's chasing you, she's chasing somebody else. All right. All right. A woman has to have some kind of standard about her. Integrity. I say, why? We got equal live. Women and men is equal. All right, you go out there and lay around and get pregnant and see who's stuck for nine months. All right. All right. Woman. Huh? Somebody's going to be stuck for nine months, and it ain't going to be the man. He out there like Johnny Appleseed, just spreading it all over so St. Louis. And that woman's stuck. Yes, sir. Huh? Uh, yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. See, I can say that because I was an oops baby. <laughs> but thank God, I'm still here. Thank God that my mama didn't have an abortion. But, you know, the woman is the one that get caught. Yes, yes. So oh, teach your girls to have a standard. You got to teach your boys, too. Yes. Because the government will catch them later. Hey, Amen. They worked all week long and take home that check. And it's $89.63. <laughs> they say, what happened? And when that woman applied for that welfare, they don't come back and get them. They don't come back and get them. So boys need to be responsible too. And not just that. Kids need to have a daddy and a mom. That's why God instituted marriage. And he put sex in marriage. Oh, hallelujah. I'm looking around now. We took it out and made it a free-for-all. But he put sex in marriage so that the kids, he said, I ordained marriage in Malachi so that I can have a godly seed so you raise good kids. Y'all read, read the Bible? But a man used to have to pursue a woman. I had to pursue her. I said, what'd she say? She said, No. <laughs> I'm concentrating on raising my daughter. No. It was the will of God. So I left her. Went out and pursued somebody else. Married her. And she served God till she fell on sleep. And when she fell on sleep, I circled back around. Here I come again. Here I come again. She said, no the first time, but I'm coming back at her again. She said, honey, she said, honey, you deceived me. Before we got married, you was cooking for me, and you was baking me stuff, and you was bringing me stuff. I had to woo her. But then after I got her, I ain't touch a stove. Oh, my Lord. I ain't cooking. Matter of fact, last night, 
asked why she was cooking, I was in the recliner. I said, honey, can I eat in here in the living room? <laughs> Brought it to me on the eye. <laughs> she fussed all the time. Because what I did, but I had to woo her. Yes, sir. Yes, right. Huh? Y'all yes, know, right, you know what I'm talking about. Still water. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Brother Rice didn't put us to shame this morning. Oh, Lord. Still with her. Still loving on her. Still saying baby and honey. Still buying flowers and candy. Yeah, that works now. Rice said, what it took to get her, I got to keep her. That's right. She told you no. And you came again. All right now. Anybody tell Jesus no the first time, but he came back around. Yes, he did. And he said, don't you see how much I love you? Don't you see these gifts that I'm giving you? Don't you recognize that what comes to you is coming from me? That I love you so much, even though you're a sinner. Amen. I'm pursuing you, and I'm giving you, and I'm blessing you. And even when you pray sometime as a sinner, I'm answering your prayer. I'm taking care of you. If happily you might come to me. Oh, hallelujah. You got to recognize the natural gift in order to get the spiritual gift. There's a spiritual part of this gift, but you got to recognize that there's somebody up there that loves me, that's taking care of me. Amen. And if he loved me when I had my back turned on him, how much will he love me if I come to him and say, Lord, I surrender? John 3. Oh, what a good God. That love you even when you was unlovable. Oh, hallelujah. Jeremiah said, I found you in your blood and nobody cared for you, but I cleaned you up. Hallelujah, Jesus. John 3. Man, we was a mess before we got saved. Yes, I was. Our backs turned on God. Yes, we was. Even though I was only 14, I was a mess. I was lost. Amen. I went out there doing some of the stuff y'all did, but I was lost. Hallelujah. Some of y'all knew the depths of Satan. Y'all read that in Revelation? Some of y'all knew the depths of sin, and the Lord still loved you. Reached all the way down there in the hell and said, this was mine. Thank you, Thank you. Yo, I don't know what you're doing with this one in your hand. Hallelujah. This was mine. Lord, yes, Lord. He loved us with an everlasting love. Yes, Over here to John 3, 16. If you don't know this, you need to repent. <laughs> Let me read verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever does what? Believing in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. Not the church. Not the saint. Amen. Not sanctified people. He loved the world. That he gave a gift. Jesus is the gift of God. Well, you want to know what the gift of God in a nutshell is? It is Jesus Christ. Somebody say, you said rain. Is it? Well, how do you think rain and sunshine come? The Bible said, Colossians 1, by him all things were created and by him all things consist. We wouldn't have snow yesterday if it wasn't for Jesus. That's the truth. That's true. More snow than we bargained for. But God shall love the world. That he gave his only begotten son. There is only one gift of God in his.